Hey booktube, how's it going today? I'm going to be doing my uh, recommendations for you for March Mystery Madness. Um, I was trying to think, there's some great um, recommendation videos out there already. Uh, Too Fond of Books has been doing amazing videos for every prompt. And um, Tim at World of Sleuths did a video about <clears throat> how to um, get free books off of Project Gutenberg, um, which is awesome. And I'm going to try to link those down below. Um, there's going to be a lot of links in the description of this video. Okay, so be prepared. So for those of you who are doing March Mystery Madness, it starts on March 1st. And it goes through March, okay? And you have um, books to read based on prompts. Now, um, the prompts this year are title-rific. Like, that's, like, kind of the theme. So, all of the things that we're talking about should have something to do in the title. The first one is single, so, like, a single word um, book or, a uh, book with the word single in it, in the title, I guess. Um, numbers easy, person is pretty easy, place, uh, place in there. Um, and then one that I didn't think many people would have trouble with, but I'm having a problem with it, and it turns out I'm not the only one, is weather the title of the book has to have some kind of weather element in it. Um, then color, time, um, space. That's the other one that everyone's having a hard time with is space. And then there's a bonus one, and that's usually a book you bought just because of the title. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be posting my... Uh, March Mystery Madness TBR, but today I just wanted to go over um, a lot of choices you have for this. And I wanted to make it kind of based on stuff that I would read, because um, there's a lot of recommendation videos out there where people are talking about all sorts of different books, and I don't want to just um, kind of echo that if you're into um more hard-boiled um or noirish type mysteries um i wanted to kind of give you something along those lines so instead of just like going after titles which is what we're supposed to be doing which we will be doing i wanted to kind of hit authors that i really like that um i think everyone should read. So the easiest one here, the easiest is the um, Travis McGee series by John D. McDonald. There's 21 books in the um, Travis McGee series. And all of these are color coded. So right off the bat, if you get one of these, <clears throat> You have your color taken care of. But we have, like, um, the Deep Blue Goodbye, Nightmare in Pink, the Quick Red Fox, and then, like, a Purple Place for Dying. That's color and place. Um, and then the last book is the one that I keep going back and forth on if I'm going to read for weather, um, The Lonely Silver Rain. Um, but I'm not there yet, and I like reading things in order. Um, but these books you don't have to read in order, but I'm weird, and I like reading things in order. <clears throat> so you have, like, 21 books right off the bat if you want to do John D. McDonald. Um, if uh, we go to, like, Dashiell Hammett, who... Um, he didn't start hard-boiled detective fiction, but he was one of the first um, when he was writing stuff for Black Mask. And um, 
So you have like Sam Spade, which is what usually everybody knows. Uh, the Maltese Falcon and stuff like that. But um, the Continental Op was his first um, hard-boiled detective. And the first book in that series, Red Harvest, um, is a great book. And it's what um, Yojimbo was based on, and which was what Fistful of Dollars was based on. Um, so, like, a lot of you would probably be familiar with the story, um, even if you haven't read it. Um, although it is very different. Raymond Chandler, who um, was another guy who had a hard-boiled detective, um, Philip Marlowe. And again, Raymond Chandler did not invent hard-boiled detectives, but he was one of the forerunners in the um, birth of it. Um, but the Philip Marlowe books, all of them have something like the high window um, for place. Uh, I mean, I guess you could even do that for space because the window is a space inside of a wall. Um, my favorite is the lady in the lake. Um, there's a uh, poodle Springs, the last Philip Marlowe book that, um, he didn't finish and someone else finished it for him. Playback for a one word book. Um, little sister for person. And then if you go like, um, Mickey Spillane, who was kind of like the next generation for hard-boiled detective fiction with um, his guy, Mike Hammer. Um, you have like Eye of the Jury and Eyes a Person. Um, One Lonely Night. So you have a number. You have um, a time for night. Um, and then you have, even in the later books, like Survival Zero, um, which is another number. Um, I tend to not love the My Camera books after the first five. Um, once you get that far into it, a lot of the um, spy and espionage genre of the 60s books boom happened and um Mike Hammer well Mickey Spillane tried to kind of make Mike Hammer um more in that vein to keep up with like the James Bond books and all that other stuff so um the first five um Vengeance is Mine My Gun is Quick um I feel like I'm missing one there The Twisted Thing um I still, even though that didn't come out until like the 70s, um, it was actually written, oh, I used to know this, <clears throat> I think it was written as the second Mike Hammer book, and the publisher rejected it, um, and then it just sat on a shelf until the 70s, and so that one still kind of fits in with it. Kiss me something. To me, that's the last <clears throat> true Mike Hammer book. I can't remember the name of it. I'll put a picture of it somewhere. Um, but, like, if you have a hold of any Carter Brown books, Carter Brown um, wrote probably close to 80 million books in about a week and a half. And um, you could pretty much find them everywhere. Um and I think uh, Stark House is uh, reprinting some of them right now as, like, double books. But um, you have everything from Angel to... One of my favorites is The Lady is Transparent, um, which is a, if you like, um, Locked Room Mysteries. Um, that one's a lot of fun. It's another Al Wheeler book. Um but there are so many um, that would fit any 
of these uh, prompts if you just look up Carter Brown. Like, it's um, very much person, place, weather, color, um, single name, number. Like, y you could just throw a dart at a bunch of Carter Brown books and you'd find one to fit the prompt. Gil Brewer is um, somebody else who I'm really digging at the minute. And um, you have a lot of, like, color books. You have a lot of number books, um, single word titles. Uh, like, uh, you have uh, Wild, Red Scarf, uh, 13 French Street, Three Way Split. Um, like, there's a ton. And um, Gil Brewer is fantastic. Um, I'm really digging him at the minute. And um, so anything you find by him would fit. And a lot of his um, stories are a lot more noirish. Like you have a guy in a situation that he shouldn't be in and the world kind of just crumbles around him kind of thing. Um, so those are always fun. Let's see, what other notes do I have here, guys? I was going to have some Ross McDonald stuff in here too. Um like his Lou Archer books, um, The Barbarous Coast, uh, oh, what else we got here? Um, The Underground Man, um, there's a ton of those. Um, with me and Lou Archer and Ross McDonald, whenever I'm reading one of those books, I like wish I was reading a Raymond Chandler book. But if you've read through all your Raymond Chandler stuff, um, then you could definitely give him a go and not be disappointed. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> if you've been watching this channel at all, you know that um, I am kind of not in love necessarily, um, but let's say in envy of Harry Wintington, who um, just kills it constantly. Um, Night for Screaming would fit time. Um, uh, let's see. Mourn the Hangman. There's a person. Um, One Deadly Dawn. That's a number and a, um, time. I think I'm actually going to read that one for this. Um, not 100% yet. Uh, what else do I have here for him? Do I have anything else on here? Um, <clears throat> but, uh, like, you just can't go wrong with Harry Winnington. Like, like, I swear, like, if you, if you read a Harry Winnington book and come away, like, not interested or just like, hmm, like, you need to go to the hospital, get your pulse taken, um, have them do the thing with the hammer on the kneecap. Make sure your reflexes are okay. Um, they should probably take your blood pressure. Anything else you see in a movie where they take someone who's dead to a hospital. Um, because I don't know if you're alive. I don't know if you have a heartbeat. Um, because Harry Winnington is just like the most exciting mf -er that is around. Definitely um, go down that road. There's also a ton of Agatha Christie stuff. Um, I think I'm going to have one Agatha Christie in this one. Um, and I'll leave that surprise until tomorrow. But um, there are just so many. Like, especially with place. Like, everything takes place somewhere. Um, the Mysterious Affair at Styles. Um... Death on the Nile, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, like, everything takes place somewhere. But I think place is very, very easy for mysteries. Um, that's usually always in the title. <clears throat> and last but not least, um, even though I already said a minute ago that this was last, um, if you guys want to... Um, read some books that you don't have to pay for and you like reading ebooks 
Um, I have two books that, um, starting Friday, which is tomorrow when this video goes live, um, through Tuesday the 23rd, um, I have two books on Amazon that are free, um, for you to, um, download, um, for March Mystery Madness. <clears throat> One of them, um, is in the hard-boiled vein, my hard-boiled detective, um, Hank Bradshaw, um, and it is, uh, Dead Dame Walking, so Dead Dame would fill the person thing if you don't have one for that, or even the bonus if you like the title, um, and Dead Dame Walking, um, is about a woman who runs, like, a tabloid that has a lot of enemies who, um, there's been a couple attempts on her life, and, um, she has um, a lot of people that hate her, that have motive to kill her. And then even the people she has close to her um, have monetary gain to get rid of her. And basically she hires Hank to um, find out who is trying to kill her and hopefully solve it before um, her life is over. So that's a dead damn walking. Um, that will be free from Friday to Tuesday. And then um, the last one is uh, Black Star Murder, which is the first book in uh, my Black Star Canyon series. And um, for those of you who picked up uh, Local Haunts, the um, horror tube, book tube, author tube, anthology, uh, that Regina put together from uh, Regina's Haunted Library. Um, I had a short story in there called um, Full Moon Over Black Star Canyon. Um, that is pretty much a true story um, about the place that inspired me to write the Black Star Canyon books. And anyone who grew up in Southern California, or more importantly, Orange County, would know um, the Black Star Canyon um, legends. Um, and anyway, so if you like Twin Peaks, if you like um, Game of Thrones type of where you have a ton of characters, um, every character involved in some other kind of story. Um, what I kind of tried to do with Black Star Canyon or Black Star Murder, the first book, is we have all these characters, and um, all these characters have secrets that they would do anything to keep, kind of thing. But um, it has everything that I like. So it's like, there's a hard-boiled cop, there's, um, some thug dudes that do thug dude crap. There's, um, some business espionage kind of stuff going on. There is, um, if you're into, like, like, YA romance, there's some of that stuff going on. Love triangles and what have you. And then just some really, really weird stuff that is probably unexplainable. Um, but we have a, um, the body of a young woman found on the mayor's property. So it's like, um, who killed her? But it's almost more importantly, who is she? Because nobody knows who this woman is. And, um, so you have your, um, your hard-boiled detective and then your straight-laced detective. And they're trying to figure out this case. And while this is going on, um, more people either end up dead or missing. And, the case just kind of snowballs and unravels um, quicker than Detective Lucas and Detective Cheney can kind of keep it together. And there's a um, another officer there um, who's a single mother with a kid 
in high school who was somehow like involved in this whole thing and um basically everyone in this little town that you wouldn't think had anything weird going on has these secrets that start to bubble to the surface and as that happens with all these characters they become a little more erratic and um, do erratic stuff and this is paced really fast um, it was originally released as a serial um, in 25 parts so um, it's just it goes and um, I really love it it's like one of the favorite things I've ever done so that's free from Friday to Tuesday as well so you could pick those up and that way you have two books because Black Star Murder that's a place so you got your place and your person taken care of already this is so easy guys like you're going to have this list done in no time flat. So anyway, um, let me know down below what books you're going to be reading for yours. Um, because, honestly, I have 24 hours before I make my list public. And there's a couple prompts that I could change at any given moment. Because I'm unsure of those books so um, if you got something good I'm gonna steal it so um, let me know down below what you are gonna be reading for March Mystery Madness and um, I'll see you tomorrow with my TBR so bye bye